This is Twit. Mudge, uh, who uh, worked briefly for, uh, for, I think, for a year and a half uh, for Twitter. Yeah, there banging on two years. Almost two years. Peter Zatko. He was very well known. He uh, he was uh, one of the members of the Cult of the Dead Cow Hacker Group, testified uh, to Congress uh, as one of the members there about hacking. He was at Loft, L-O-P-H-T, very well-known hacking group. Uh, later on, worked for the Department of Defense and other very respectable organizations in uh, cybersecurity. Was hired by Twitter right after uh, they were hacked. Remember when Elon Musk and Barack Obama and Steve, uh, uh, Tim Cook, rather, uh, accounts were hacked, saying, hey, we want to give back, so if you give us your, some crypto, we will double it and give it back to you, like any idiot would fall for that. But it was a massive hack of some of the best-known accounts on Twitter. Twitter freaked out, hired Zatko. He was there almost two years, fired at the beginning of the year, according to... Agrawal, after he did the whistleblowing, he said, well, he was fired because he wasn't any good. Uh, he says that Twitter's security is terrible. He said he tried for a long time to tell him they didn't listen. So six months after his firing, he, he became a whistleblower, uh, sending information to the uh, FTC, the SEC, and others. Um, lots of stories have come out of that. I have to say, as soon as I read it, I said, I want to know more before I believe everything he says. Can I ask a question? I think, go ahead, Becky. Because I was reading this and, and something that's, you know, I was curious, what exactly are the allegations that are being made around the security uh, breaches and problems? And so he said um, there were no logs, um, and he specifically called out around January 6th yes. that there were no logs and then nobody knew where the data lived, whether it was critical, all engineers had some form of critical access to the production environment. And if an internal um, engineer wanted to uh, take over the platform, they could and they wouldn't know where the where the attack was coming from and there was no way to close that down. Is that something that you think most companies do no. have? I mean- Well, maybe, I mean, Here's the irony of this. That was what he was hired to fix. This is exactly it, Leo. So you've got it nail on the head. So he comes in in 2020 in order to fix, you know... Exactly what that. What you can probably all appreciate is a lot of Twitter security problems, right? As you pointed out, the hacking of Tim Cook, all the cybersecurity stuff. He then makes a big stink about the fact that following January the 6th, you know, he was worried that somebody who was sympathetic to the January 6th you know, quote, unquote, insurrection cause could take over the platform and do something. And you're like, well, dude, you've been there for a year and a half. <laughs> Why Isn't that you, what you were supposed to be he doing? He was literally like, brought you, in. Didn't you work that out a year and a half ago? That was that was your job. So, I mean, really, the, his complaint might be, well, I tried and they wouldn't let me. I don't know if he said that specifically. He also said, so I think what it, I think what he says is that a lot of the complaints that he had and a lot of the queries that he had basically got tied up in the kind of yeah. Twitter executive board, which was non-functioning because of the Dorsey. We knew and this, though. The, Twitter's right. had the most I mean, dysfunctional, dysfunctional board in history. Right? Yeah. That is Twitter in a nutshell. <laughs> That's our, our little dysfunctional friend. Um, he said that Twitter was in violation of its... FTC consent decree in 2011, the FTC, after a number of security problems, uh, said you must establish and maintain a comprehensive information security program that will be assessed by an outside auditor. And you must not, this is the best part, you must not lie <laughs> to your users about your security. And he says, well, they didn't do either. Again, he was there. Uh, it's hard to know. I mean, Mudge is respectable and respected. So, you know, there is some concern that maybe the timing of this so close to the, to Elon Musk's trial in Chancery Court in December, I mean, in October uh, in, in Delaware, uh, that maybe it was to support Elon's contention that there were too many bots on Twitter. Actually, there's a very good piece, which I recommend, from our good friend Mike Masnick on uh, Tech Dirt. 
in which he explains why the whistleblower report actually does not support Musk, even though it might seem to. It, it supports Twitter. Um, so I think, I mean, there is, I don't want to get too meta about this, but, um, but Becky will know as somebody who works in a, in a media outlet. I, and I don't know Mike and I don't know um, Tech it very well, but it's very interesting to see like what outlets run with what version of that story. And you can kind of guess like who got the internal briefing from the Twitter PR, who got the <laughs> internal briefing from the PR that, that Mudge clearly hired. Um, because the different angles on this story are like really distinct. Mike, it's Mike either, is either, you know, this guy was fighting his hardest to try and fix a broken culture within Twitter, or it's this guy was absolutely, you know, an idiot who couldn't, you know, tie his shoelaces together and certainly couldn't fix anything, you know, inside a major corporation. And you go, well, those two things, you know, two perspectives on possibly the same set of facts. But it's interesting to see who runs with what. With what. Uh, I, I will well, defend this, Mike on this. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I didn't about. understand the story. Will yeah. you explain why it... I still don't understand why it supports Twitter. So that's because you're in the media, okay? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The lamestream media is not telling the truth, Vasnik says the media is unfortunately falling for the spin. Mm -hmm. So what Mazik explains, and this is this is God's truth. He's not making something up. Uh, it it, re it re revolves around a misunderstanding, or either a misunderstanding, intentional or accidental, that Elon has about bots, and and then Elon has intentionally confused the world about. It sounds like Elon is saying that the platform is more than five percent fake, and that Twitter has been lying about that. That is, in fact, not what Twitter has ever said. Twitter's counting something called monthly, daily active users. And this is not monthly. <laughs> Sorry. That would make no sense. Monthly, <laughs> daily active users. What is MDAO stand for? Monetizable. Those, those monetizable. They even better. Thank you for correcting that. So MDAO's monetizable daily active users is a number that Twitter gives its advertisers uh, so that when they buy ads, it's in effect saying, well, Every day, this many people who could click on your ad are watching. They also say, very clearly, they said this to the SEC, they said it to the FTC, they say it to advertisers. This is an estimate because it's hard to tell who's real and who's not real. We estimate about 5% of that MDAO number, very important, not of the total, but of the MDAO number, could still be bots. We try to filter them out, but we may be, as, we may be off by 5%. That is, they never say how many of all of Twitter is bots. The whole point of calculating MDAO is to tell advertisers, this is how many people could click on your ad, and we might be off by 5%. So Elon is intentionally or unintentionally conflating bots on the total platform with this very important number that Twitter is using. It's the number they use to monetize. And Twitter's always said it exactly right. And in fact, the whistleblower, Mudge, confirms it. I mean, that's exactly right. I mean, um, I think to say whether Elon is doing it intentionally and unintentionally. He will mm, look. Is there that much we, question? We don't know it? his intent, but he, it looks like he's trying to get out of the deal, it looks right? Like he's so he's looking it, whatever right? he can find to get out of the deal. But right? I think the, the the more important point, rather than you know, it, 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 this the, the spam and the bot thing is kind of a tangent. The question is, you know, did everybody who is basically an engineer at Twitter? have access to basically mess with the platform with no logs that describe right, who messed bad. with the platform. Right. I mean, that's bad. that's bad. If you've got to commit code, if you've got to mess with the platform, that's something that you should put your name to. And he is basically alleging that anybody, and, you know, half the engineering team could commit anything without having to put their name to it. Here's why this whole MDAO thing is, is relevant to that. Because Mudge is misstating this in, in Elon's favor showing a misunderstanding of what's going on which then casts in my opinion into doubt the entire whistleblowing account he, if he doesn't understand this we don't know how much of this is accurate how much of this is he thought supporting musk it it puts the whole thing in doubt so i'm not saying it's not true i'm not saying it's true i'm saying what we have to do is wait for an investigation uh, the sec and the ftc will investigate uh, and see oh, what be, they come That'll up be pretty with. quick, right? That'll, uh -huh, that'll, that'll yeah, come right, around yeah. pretty quickly, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so in I 10 years, we'll know what happened. I looked at this from a different perspective, which was follow the money. 
And so much in the federal whistleblower um, policy. Much There's a reward. Yes. $10 million yes. is the reward. Yeah. But if you look at the SEC filings on top executives at Twitter, they're getting huge amounts of their compensation in stock. So I don't know the exact amounts that he was compensated in stock or how much he currently holds, but you're thinking that he would sabotage his own net worth by uh, undermining the platform. So both of those things could be true. And so is he going to make more which... money from the reward than he would lose from the failing stock? We don't know that. Right. Uh, what um, we don't know well, is if Elon Musk made a call and said, hey, you know, it would really be helpful. I mean, that's really a, a, a scurrilous... That's very conspiratorial. That's a scurrilous yeah. accusation. But I'm just, I'm, I think my point is, there's a lot we don't know. And it's. It, it, I don't think you can just say, well, Mudge isn't lying, this is true. If it is, it's, it's horrific. It's bad. But there is some areas in this, including the MDAO, where he doesn't understand what's going on. There's also this question of, well, it's that bad, why didn't you fix it? So, I mean, that's something he could have fixed. He was in charge of security. He could have said, no, from now on, we got to log access. Simply. Well, I think I think the thing that it really comes down to and the thing that it just highlights, and I mean, in a sense, the, the sad thing about this is that it isn't really news, which is Twitter leadership is just an absolute yeah. shoot show. Like, it's <laughs> terrible. Nobody can, you know, really take responsibility for anything. You know, we are in a situation where the board is trying to force a sale of a company at a stock price that was, you know, 30% lower than it was nine months ago in order to get out of what seems like a grim situation. Like, this is not a company that's that's got its head screwed on straight. No, that's, and so, but we've I, always, like so, you said, this is not news. It's know, always but been it's a not mess. News, but it is sort of crazy that this, you know, it, it, Twitter has almost become a, a utility for a certain well, okay. section of the so internet. Then, and it's kind of mad that it's run so insanely. It, it, this is the real question then for you all as the panel. And I'd love to know what you think, Becky, and I'd love Will, and I'd love Roger weigh on on this. How important is Twitter? So what if it's a shoot show? <laughs> right? Who cares so if I it's think a shoot show? So I think well, the answer okay. is it's it's really important to a certain segment of the population. Journalists. We way o yeah, we way overestimate how much yeah. of the population that is. It's like a hundred percent of journalists are on Twitter. Uh, and so twit and so journalists think that a hundred percent of the world is Twitter, right? And I say that as a former journalist, I can I, you know, I understand the bubble. Um, the uh, how important is it to real life? I mean, what percentage of the, of the U.S. population is on Twitter? Like seven percent, nine percent, less small. than? Yeah, but think about it this way: you know, a lot of people assert that Twitter is the public square, right? Of of the digital. Yeah, age. that's my question. But is it? I I like the I like the metaphor that it's more the Colosseum. <laughs> a lot of people, and this is not my original <laughs> idea. <laughs> this is but, brilliant. But that the. The idea is that there's so much viewership of the blood sport that's taking place on Twitter, and that is important, and it's a proxy for the public square. Now, that's just one thought. Another thing, this is I was I, this question really was front of mind for me also, Leo. So I did a little research and um, listen to this. The Senate Judiciary Committee's top Republican, Chuck Grassley, said that all of these complaints, the whistleblower complaint, raised serious national security concerns and privacy issues that need to be investigated. And he said, take a tech platform that collects massive amounts of user data, combine it with what appears to be an incredibly weak security infrastructure, and infuse it with foreign state actors with an agenda, and you've got a recipe for disaster. I actually thought that was pretty intelligent. Except... The foreign state actors aren't getting the data that Twitter collects. What data does Twitter collect, really? It's not not doesn't collect the same quality of data that Google and Facebook collect. Incidentally, I mean, what information you do you give? You've got to look at the trending create? topics to know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what information do you give Twitter? Not much. In fact, they did misuse the information. We know this. They when you give them email and phone numbers for two factor, we found out, and they've. Uh, uh, pleaded guilty to this, that they would use it for advertising. Uh, okay, but that's not a national security issue. Remember, the Fair Republicans enough. don't like Twitter because they banned Donald Trump. And so I think there's a certain amount of piling on from the Republicans because they would they just don't like Twitter. Um, 
can Twitter, so let me ask you this, Becky. Do you think Twitter could be used by foreign adversaries as a potent propaganda tool? I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I would only just extrapolate in a thought experiment based on the, the complaint and the whistleblower complaint, which is what would be a scenario where it could have caused more destructive actions, say, during the January 6th insurrection? What if certain accounts were suppressed and others were promoted? Um, would that have really um, changed history? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I mean, maybe it was used to organize, but if if it didn't work, they could go on WhatsApp. They could have gone to Signal. They could have gone to any number of messaging Truth platforms. Truth Network. Truth, Truth Social apparently is about to go bankrupt, by the way. That's another, yeah. but I think, that's another hey, matter I think, entirely. Becky, you, you, you've hit the nail on the head with the Coliseum thing, right? It's about a group of people wanting, you know, a certain amount of, of spectacle and enjoying the spectacle. But I think the fact that we're even discussing this, uh, you know, well, this evening is a case. We're tech network. Look, we're going to discuss it because the <laughs> and, and the the quote comes to mind of, you know, Leo, are you not entertained? Yes. Well, <laughs> I have heard from many of our most avid fans that they are not entertained by discussions of Twitter. So <laughs> I am taking I a great risk doing this, but I think it's important. I, I have so two my point more is, nuggets. my point with Grassley is he's bringing in two separate things. The privacy violations and foreign actors. They they're they're two completely separate they're not there's no intersection, even though he's acting as if there's an intersection. I think the private actors thing is reasonable. Nuggets, more nuggets from Warley. Two, two nuggets that I think are interesting. Um the attorney for Mudge is Deborah Katz. And I thought, gosh, I know that name. Yeah. And I looked her up. She represented Christine Blasey Ford in the Kavanaugh hearings. Yeah. And the chief whistleblower in the Harvey Weinstein um, debacle. So she's and a so, the, the important whistleblower attorney. She's a heavy hitter. So yeah. she, this is not; these are not small actors here. So I thought that was super interesting. Can I ask um, a, a macro question? Rod Pyle, macro questioner. Rod finally speaks up. So <laughs> I, I've missed. You're just wisely of this. avoiding it because you, for the last month, you've been in in the Arctic. Well, no, I haven't gotten any news because I couldn't listen to you up there. It was horrible. <laughs> and I mean, literally, the only com comms we had were 144 character uh, texts on our GPS units. But that brought me to thinking about Twitter while I was up there because Did of a similar it? character count. And so, uh, stupid macro question, but has anybody? figured out what his game musk's game plan might have been just just stepping back to the beginning of this this crazy story to almost buy twitter as opposed to actually be serious about it i mean i know there was talk about well he was going to do this and then do that and drive the price down to get it for less and all that but this is a guy who love him or like him uh crazy or not you know has been on this kind of crusade somewhat quixotic in some some cases to build electric cars to save the environment, to build massive, ever larger rockets, he tells us to set up a backup population on Mars, although I think most of us who don't get to go probably wouldn't be that supportive of that, but we like the idea, and in, in theory, you know, for $44 billion, he could have condominiums on the rings of Saturn right now. So what is the point if he's really doing that? Is there some other agenda here? Does he really think that it is such a big chunk of the public conversation that he's going to use that to drive his other agenda? I'm confused. Can I can I give the conspiratorial answer from the other side oh, of the pond? Oh, please, I love conspiracies, and we never flew to the moon, you're going to tell me. So the conspiracy that we have over here... Yeah, there was a guy used to be on the show that said that, and we don't have, we don't have him on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Banned him. Go ahead. Is that... Um, uh, Elon obviously has an enormous stake in, in Tesla, which is, um, to a greater or lesser degree, heavily... De dependent on government grants and part of the, um, you know, if you look at the the Inflation Reduction Act, gives a lot of credits to automakers that make electric cars. It restores he Tesla's has, credits, which he had lost. Yeah, he has uh, enormous contracts with uh, the space agency and NASA, which are government um, bodies. And the, all of this is a very long play on the expectation that Donald Trump will win in 2024. And in order to restore access to Donald Trump's Twitter account in 2024, ah, there might be a little quid pro quo to Ellen. Do you, wait a minute, people across the pond think that? I mean, when it comes That's to your crazy politics, talk. we'll think about most things. <laughs> is it? I mean, is, is it? it crazy? Is it crazy to think no. that Elon would barter Donald Trump's I think Twitter a, account? I think there's a simpler 
Occam's razor here. I think there's a simpler explanation for all of this, that the Elon Musk who founded, didn't find, bought Tesla and built yeah. it. Uh, did he found SpaceX or did he buy it? I yeah, think he no, founded he SpaceX. Yeah, it with a couple other engineers. Uh, and built it. Is not the Elon Musk of late that we've seen primarily on Twitter. His latest thing, by the way, is uh, the biggest crisis coming to the world <laughs> is underpopulation, which is why I have 10 children. <laughs> Uh, he's off his Without rocker now. Names. He's not the same guy. He's off his rocker. And he's also shoot. He's a ready, fire, aim kind of guy who ready, fired, aim $44 billion to buy Twitter and then realized, oh, that was a bad idea and has been trying to get out of it ever since.